A data visualization or a dashboard is used to track, analyze, and display key performance indicators and data points. These data visualization can be used to monitor the health of your business or a specific process, and also it helps us to support the specific need of your users. For a great dashboard design, it's always good to share some information on how to read a dashboard and to add data dictionary wherever it's required and also to add description about each worksheet that helps the user to understand it quickly. In this tutorial, we are going to learn two different ways on how we can achieve this. So without any further delays, let's get started. Welcome back, this is Gurpreet from Dataviz Canvas and today we are going to learn something different in terms of designing a dashboard, especially from a user point of view, like how the user will be reading the dashboard. And for that, we'll be embedding the information onto the dashboard and we are going to learn how we can do that in two different ways. So as you can see in this dashboard, we have shared these information icons on this dashboard and when you hover over to that you can see a tooltip or a window pop-ups which tells us about what this worksheet is all about and for all of these information tooltips we can add the data dictionary as well or just the information talking us through what this worksheet is telling us about and we can do that on all different worksheets as you can see here so that's that's the one way of doing it and the other way is by simply clicking on this button which I have created which will highlight all of the different sections on the workbook and it tells us exactly what this workbook or worksheet is telling us about. Like in this section I am talking about sales by subcategory and also I have added the data dictionary for this particular section where we can put all the information about that particular field or the calculation we have created and also we can add the formulas as it is. So these are the two ways which we are going to talk about today and it's quite simple and quite interactive and you can just use these buttons to go back and forth onto the dashboard. So let's see how we can create that. So I have created this dashboard which I will share the link in the description below as well which I have done a separate tutorial on how to create this interactive dashboard so you can go to that link and see how I have created this dashboard and once the dashboard is created it's quite simple so let's let's start with our information icon way of adding the information on top of each of these worksheets so for that I will simply create a new worksheet and in that, I will simply place a placeholder field by just typing in one and I will right click or just click on the drop down here and change the measure value to minimum or maximum. So what I'm trying to do is here, um, it's just like changing a particular value of that one and then I will simply change it into form of shapes and I will select the shape from here which I have put it in the custom folder. So you can create your own custom shapes or you can download it from online. I will put these custom shapes on my website as well, which you can copy and download from there too. So I have used this information icon. I will just select that as a custom shape and I will remove all the formatting of um, headers or borders. I don't need any of those ones. So I will remove all of those headers and um, headers and the borders so you can see here we have grid lines for rows we don't need that and I will make sure we don't have excess value as well and I will hide the header so once we have done that I will select the entire view for this worksheet and you will see the information icon is in the center so once we have that in the center you can put whatever information you like here so I will simply go to the tooltip and I will remove this minimum value and I will write in whatever I want regarding that particular worksheet. So once I do that, you can change the size if you want, coloring if you want, and simply press OK. And you will see when you hover over, you will see the information on there. So I will give it the name Info1 as a worksheet. 
and now I will create a duplicate worksheets for all different sections right so I will create that here and so I will create another duplicate sheet just here by right clicking so we need four because I have four sections in the dashboard if you can see one two three and four so I will create four of these ones and I will put all the information for these particular tooltips by simply going into the tooltip and updating it with whatever value I have. I will do the same thing for info3. I will copy that and I will change the value. As you can see here, I have added the data dictionary as well. So you can add the data dictionary. If you have multiple fields, you can put all that information there and you can also type in what that calculation is doing. So in this case, I can see this calculation is returning the Boolean value after comparing the quarter with the quarter parameter. So you can do the same thing with your data dictionary or all the calculations and put all the information you want here for that particular worksheet. Simply press OK and the last one is for our sheet four. So I'm just putting the simple descriptions here. You can change or add according to your requirement. So once we have all of that there, I will simply go to the dashboard and I will bring all these information here. Just drag it and I will change the layout. So in this case, I will just keep it 40 by 40. So that will look something like this and you can put it wherever you want. So now when you hover over to that section, information section, you will see all the information for that particular section. And same way I will bring in for two as well and hide it. And again, I will change the dimensions of that worksheet and we will put it on the sheet number two. And then I will bring to the same for in for three and in for four. And once we do that, it will look something similar to this one, as you can see on the screen. And here you go. So we have added it for three, and the last one is for the bottom chart, which I will add it here. And here you go. So once you have done that, you can move it around. In this case, we are using floating sheets so you can move it around and you can see here when you hover over you can see all that information and the data dictionary so that's way one of doing it right so now the other way of doing it is simply by using containers so what I will do here I will bring the vertical 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 container and I will simply drag it on the top and I will expand it so that it covers the entire canvas or the entire worksheet. And once I do that, I will bring a horizontal container and I will bring it as a tiled value here. So you will not see anything right now, but once I start bringing the text mark or text object where I will be adding the value. So I will simply bring it in here and put it in the tiled container and I will weld the value and press OK. And for this one, you will see the text started to appear here. And I will go to the layout and I will change the background color to a darker color. And I wanted to change the opacity to 85%. And you will see it here. And I will expand it like this. And you will see the text at the background are of the same color, so it's not popping up. So I will change the text color to lighter color, white in this case. And also, I want to increase the size, let's say 15. So it looks something like this, right? But this is covering both the sheets, but I only want it for this sheet. So what I will do, I will bring another text label and I will put it on the top here. And here I will add the text for the second sheet. And I will paste it and change the text to 14 and change it to lighter color and press OK. And you will see the text started to appear here, but the background is again white or none in this case. So I will change that to black 
and I will change the opacity to 85%. So now you can see there are two sections, right? And then I will simply click on this one and adjust where I want the section to finish. So you can see it here. So the font is different, it's 12, I change it to 15. And you will start seeing how these information are overlaying on top of our existing worksheets. And I will do the same thing here. So if you notice before, I have used, if I expand this on the right hand side, I've used a vertical container first, where I want one vertical section here, second and third for three sections. And in the first one, I have added horizontal container because I wanted to split it into two, right? So that's how we are doing this. So now I want to bring another section at the bottom here. So I will bring the text object and I can simply press shift in, um, in our, on the keyboard or I can change it to tile and bring and drag it here. You can see it here, the section appears. So I will just simply leave that one, uh, leave the mouse there and you will see the window is adding that value in there. So let's change it to 15 and change the color to light, white in color. And I will again change the background to darker color and change the opacity to 85. In my case, you can keep it the way you want it. You can add more opacity or just keep the darker color. I just wanted to give that effect in the background so they can still see a little bit of the charts in the background and that way they can do that. But now if you notice, all these sections are all close together. So now I want to add another blank object. I will just bring it and add it here. So if you see, it is added here. So I can adjust the size accordingly. So you can see it here, it looks something like this. And I will expand the container shell so it can look really nice. So you can see here, now we just need to add the last section at the bottom. So we can either add the blank object or we can simply add the text object. So in this case, I will add the text object with nothing in there and press OK and adjust the width. And then I will add the last text object by just simply dragging the text and putting it there. And add the text object here, change the font size to 15 and change the font color to the lighter color. And now we go and change the background to darker shade and change the opacity. And if I keep the opacity 50, 100%, now you can see here, it looks something like this. So that is fine too. If you like a darker background, you can use it that way. But I personally feel that I would like my users to see in the background what chart we are talking about. You can also keep it like lighter version here as well, if that works for you. So it's totally personal preference. So you can play around with it. So once this is done, I will select the final container, the vertical container, and I will simply say show and hide button. I want to add it. So when I click on that, you will see here the show and hide button is added. And it looks something like this. So now we will simply edit that button by clicking on the drop down and select edit button. And once the pop up window will appear, it will show something like this where the button appearance we can select based on the item is already shown or if the item is hidden. So in this case, the item is shown, so I will choose a button which I have already customized and created in this one. So I want to go back, so I will select this button. So when this section is already showing, I want to choose a button which will take me to the original home page. And when the item is hidden, I want to show the instruction where it says how to read a dashboard. So I will select that and press OK. And you will see the button appeared here. And I will adjust the position and the formatting and put it wherever on the dashboard I want. So once I do that, once we publish, when I click on hide, it will go back to the original dashboard. And when I want to see how to read the dashboard, and when it's published, we will just simply need to click on that. But right now, because I am using the desktop version, so I have to simply click on the show and hide like this. And this is how we are using the buttons and the containers to create a way in which we can show the users how to read the dashboard 
or if we want to add any other information or the data dictionary onto the dashboard. I hope you guys enjoyed this session and if you have any questions feel free to reach out and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.